is at a destination at the time of or immediately following a crisis or disaster? Interestingly, there are many that still would. We have learnt about the impact that the media has on tourists opting out of visiting a destination hit by a disaster, but apart from the obvious, what are the other reasons tourists stay away? Research has told us that the main reasons tourists cancel are as follows. First, they believe the destination will be a depressing place to be, and let's face it, no one wants to be depressed on holidays. Second, they are concerned about their safety and well-being. Following the Japan earthquake, we know that many tourists wouldn't travel due to concerns about aftershocks. And after the Queensland floods, people were worried about water contamination. Third, and especially if we are talking about a flood disaster or a cyclone, tourists worry about bad weather. This is possibly due to the constant footage of torrential rain and winds they are exposed to in the media. But did you know that the day the Brisbane floods caused the most damage, there was not a cloud to be seen? Confusion as to the availability and accessibility of tourism-related services and destinations is another common reason people cancel. During the Queensland floods, for example, the Gold Coast experienced countless cancellations, yet this particular area was hardly affected. Theme parks and beaches all remained open, but tourists obviously didn't know this. Finally, we have learnt that often tourists simply fear getting in the way of the recovery process. They assume the destination simply wants to get on with the clean-up and therefore are not ready to welcome or receive visitors. So what about those tourists that will still come? The ones that won't cancel their existing holiday plans? This market is what we refer to as a resilient tourist segment. Following the Queensland floods, our research revealed that 46% of tourists who had existing plans to visit Queensland, either at the time of or immediately following the floods, went ahead with their travel. So what were the reasons behind their decision to travel? The first was all about altruism, people genuinely wanting to help Queensland recover by helping to keep the tourism industry operating. These people understood that their visit and expenditure would give Queensland tourism industry the boost they need to stay in business and recover from the flood as quickly as possible. Secondly, the community, spirit and camaraderie displayed in the media can also entice tourists. Following the Queensland floods, tourists were inspired by this and it became something they clearly felt was worth witnessing. But it is important to note that the motivations for leisure travel may in fact vary in accordance with the type of disaster or crisis. For example, following the Christchurch earthquake, the number one motivation expressed by the Australian tourism market for travelling to this city was curiosity. So are there any defining characteristics of the resilient tourist? How do we recognise them? Research has indicated that resilient travellers have the following traits. In terms of travel purpose, research that investigated cohorts that would travel following the Japan earthquake revealed that those travelling for work and specific events, i.e. when substitution is low, are more likely to go ahead with travel plans. We also know that those who have some form of attachment to the destination or have visited the destination frequently in the past are more likely to travel in the event of a disaster or crisis. Those that have a high need for excitement are also more likely to travel following a disaster. So how does a destination respond to these mixed feelings that exist among the tourism market? How do they appeal to those that are likely to be persuaded? The end goal of disaster recovery marketing is to convince the tourism market that the destination is safe and ready and able to accept visitors. Specific actions a destination and its stakeholders can take include focusing on existing and loyal tourists, so those that have been to the destination before and feel a sense of loyalty, providing factual information to assist tourists to make an informed decision, making sure tourists know exactly what is open and accessible and what is not. Regular updates as to the recovery process and the status of the destination, so tourists remain informed as to how the community are coping. This is important as tourists will only return when they feel confident that the community is ready to welcome them. 
With regard to messaging, there are many approaches a destination can take, and these will depend greatly on the magnitude, type and duration of the crisis or disaster. Some examples include open for business. This is to let the tourists know that despite the disaster, the destination is pretty much operating as per normal. Tapping into those altruistic motives by asking for the tourist support. Then we have curiosity enhancement, encouraging those that really want to see for themselves what has happened. Discounting is also a common marketing strategy, although our research has revealed it is not always successful as people question why is it so cheap. Finally, focusing on local events may succeed in diverting tourists' attention away from the disaster and crisis while giving them a reason to visit. Let's hear from the industry now about the approach they took to their recovery marketing following the Queensland floods. So how was marketing and communication important to us during the flood period and immediately after the flood period? I think the area where it was most important during the floods was definitely the social media. Letting people know what was going on, communicating with those people that had booked in adventures and we actually had two weddings booked in during the flood so of course we had to keep our communication up with those people letting them know what was going on and unfortunately they had to go and uh, get married elsewhere. But for me the most important thing with keeping the communication going was I didn't realise this at the time but things like Twitter and, and Facebook were really really helpful because on the weekend after the floods we had over a hundred people come down to help us clean up and it was just communicating with those people letting them know that hey we need a little bit of help and then those guys coming down and helping us so so as far as during the floods were concerned it was really about social media after the floods what became really really important was mainstream media and PR because people really wanted to know the story. They really wanted to know what was happening with us and how they could help. And what we did is in, instead of shutting down and, and keeping things to a minimum, we actually ramped up. We put two new people on as far as helping with sales and marketing was concerned. And we also put on someone to help with PR. And we've still got those positions open today. So when I said it really changed our business, it really did. And what we found was all the media were, were happy to come down and help us out. We had uh, Channel 7 with uh, Sunrise, with Koshy's Business Builders, Channel 9 were down here, the ABC ran a story on us. We also had all the local papers running with us. But the one thing that um, I found really, really worked well was at the end of the year, when people had to start thinking about where they're going to have their Christmas party and what they're going to do with their team, they started to think about us and they started to think, well, this year has been devastating for River Life, so let's support them by coming down here. So we had a real surge towards the end of the year, which was really great for us. So what were the differences in our communication and marketing to internationals and to domestic visitors? Well, most of our communication was was directed to domestic visitation. However, we did spend a lot of time communicating with our agents, letting them know what was going on, because the last thing we wanted was international visitors turning up and we weren't able to give them the experience they were after. So that was a lot more direct, uh, whereas our social media and our marketing overall picks up domestic and international visitors as well. So, Disaster recovery marketing is not a simple task, yet it is an extremely important one. Understanding the key concerns of tourists is paramount to devising a successful post-disaster marketing campaign. We should also recognise that not all tourists will be deterred by a disaster. What kind of tourists are you when it comes to deciding whether to visit a destination in the wake of a crisis or disaster?